WinBet is live in Tennessee and bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand. Now you can get in on the action with all of your favorite teams across NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, MLS, and more. Don't forget to take advantage of the generous promos, great odds, and unique parlays available in Tennessee on the WinBet app. Head to the App Store to download the WinBet app and sign up today. First-time bettors will receive a risk-free sports bet of up to $500. Terms and conditions apply for all promotion. Get the details at winbet.com. W-Y-N-N-B-E-T dot com. Must be 21 or older and present in Tennessee. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line, 1-800-889-9789. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at They Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. I know everybody on this roster plays hard. We play together, and whoever lines it up with us, it doesn't really matter. Memphis versus everybody, for sure. Oh, 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 Justice Winslow with the takeaway. Dylan for three. Down the ball and Ja breaks it in. And one. Lob Clark. Oh, oh. Anderson for three. Boom. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. Welcome to Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com from the American Home Shield Studio at FedEx Forum. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Grizzlies playoff game day. It's time to rise and grind. Jessica Benson, Megan Triplett, CJ Hurt with you here to start your morning, to get you excited for the rest of the day. A late night for Grizzlies basketball coming off a late night of NBA playoffs. Mm -hmm. We'll sleep in July. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, but still exciting exciting time. It's been fun. It's I will say it's been fun, even though you had, you know, you started off last night with like a blowout. It still continued to be great, some great basketball games, and it's keeping us all busy. It's keeping, like, it's keeping me busy at least. I don't have much of a like now watching different shows like Real Housewives. I've had to go on a pause, and that's just gonna have to find its way in the afternoon at some point. But um, yeah, we it's an exciting day because it's game two for Grizzlies versus the Utah Jazz, and after you've seen game twos of other series. I'm even like equally more excited because what it could mean if the Grizzlies go up two to nothing, that could be so, so big, especially to do it on somebody's court, what we saw happen yesterday. Yeah, the Celtics-Nets game kind of like lulled me into a false sense of security for the night. I was like, oh, I can just kind of mm-hmm. tap in, tap out. And then next thing I knew, I was up until 
midnight watching two great games in the West and watching the Mavericks go in to Staples Center, go up 2 nothing on the Clippers, essentially have the Clippers all in their feelings mm-hmm. this morning. It, it couldn't have been worse for LA, especially, I mean, I guess you can't give up a 3-1 lead this year, so like, there's your bright side in that situation. But it does resonate with us because you're watching a Grizzlies team that essentially has the same chance to do what the Mavericks just did. Mm-hmm. And I, I kept thinking back to that game here against the Mavericks, the Luka Luka shot. And it was like at that point in time, it was like, who's going to be in the play-in game? And the Mavericks made their way into it. And the Clippers tanked at the end of the season to face the Mavericks. That's like the ultimate bulletin board material. And now the Mavericks are giving it to them. Yeah, I mean, for the Clippers, it's it's hard to figure. It's, we're trying to like all trying to figure out what's going to happen for them as they have to now travel. And you're going to have to face a team that is going to have a couple more thousand more fans than what you just what you just had in Staples Center. So that's going to be uh, key. It can be done, especially when you have Kawhi Leonard who can go off and have 40, a 41-point night, but you still can get a victory. But you're going to have to improve on a team that – has led the way when it comes to threes in the whole entire league. They're going to have to make and shoot more threes and also defend the threes. You cannot allow the Dallas Mavericks to hit 17 one night, 18 last night, and expect to win, especially when you have a Luka, a Porzingis. And for Dallas, we've talked about it throughout the whole entire season. They have that depth. They have so many guys, and the Clippers do too, but it just it, it wasn't meshing. It wasn't, it wasn't jiving because the, the Mavs just had more of that energy that, that more that tenacity and it starts with Luca and it ends with Luca. Luca has more flair right now. Luca looks like the best player on the court, and that's coming after Kawhi Leonard had 30 of his 41 in the first half. But that's the problem. He only scored 11 mm-hmm. points in the second half, and I get it. He can't do it alone. But you need Toronto level Kawhi takeover. If you, as the Clippers, want to get to forget about the NBA Finals, the Conference Finals. You need that next level of Kawhi. And it looked like you were getting it in the first half, and then things collapsed from there. I looked at it this morning. I thought for sure the Mavericks out-rebounded the Clippers because at the end of the game, it felt like every hustle, every 50-50 ball was going the way. No! The Clippers out-rebounded the Mavericks. The Clippers had 60 points in the paint. Mavericks left 11 points at the free throw line. Like, how did the Clippers lose this? And they should have lost by 15 points. Turnovers. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And the Clippers haven't played the way that we expect them to play. They rely heavily on that three shot because that's why they, they lead the league in it. And when that when that falls, yes, they go they went inside the paint and they're able to do that. But the turnovers and the ball movement, controlling the pace, none of that was there. And that's what the Clippers are great in. And so it's starting to get back into that playoff basketball for the Clippers. You're thinking to yourself, are they, are they going to – is this happening again? Are Could you okay? this very well? Tyron Lue said that they're not worried. I mean, I know that that's coach talk. Was you could say, well, would you say after you lost and you're now down 0-2? You're like, we're not worried. We know what we have to do. We're just going to have to bring in. Yeah, it's going to take a lot more than what we just played against because now you got to go on the road. And can you be that road team to, to – now you definitely want to get two wins. You don't, wanna, you don't even want to get just one victory and be t- go down 3-1 going back home. You definitely want to tie it up and go 2-2. Two and two. They're falling apart. Rajon Rondo's yelling profanities at Tyron Lue. Um, you don't want to be down 2-0, right? And in NBA history, this is from 2019. I'm, I'm throwing 2020 out because it was the bubble. It was a completely different year. But since 2019, here's a stat, right? Team, only 20 teams out of 282 in a seven-game series have come back from being down 0-2, right? That's, that's 7%. And since 2012, when teams have gone down 2-0, it's only been six squads to come back and win the series down 2-0. Like, this is not where you want to be. We can talk about Kawhi Leonard needing to, to step his game up, but he still gave you 40, 41. And the whole reason he went to the Clippers was so he didn't have to put that, the team on his shoulders. It was so that he could get somebody like a Paul George to come in and carry some of that load for him. It is sad to see what the Clippers yeah. are going through right now, especially after having such a good season, right? They're, they were one of the best teams in the West. Sure, they tanked at the end to get the four, but nobody was blaming or to get the three, excuse the me. Nobody was move. blaming them. That was a smart move. On that paper, we, that's that what you We thought it was done. a smart yeah. move, but it's the Clippers, and they're going to Clipper this thing, man. Yeah, and, I, and I, I, with you, I don't put a lot on Kawhi. We're seeing, we're seeing Kawhi do what Kawhi can do. 
can he do more? Yeah, but like once again, you got to get the help. Yeah. Your starters got to like step up. Paul George did. I mean, he couldn't hit a three, but I mean, the guy did still have a double double. You know, when it comes to I think twelve rebounds, twenty eight points. He's but you still need a a more contribution. You need help, and you got to play defense. You got to play better defense. The Clippers play good defense. They got to get back to where their defense is getting stops because their offense is there when they're making threes. But can you get stops? And can you make can you get stops around a Dallas Mavericks team when Luca gets hot? Luca fuels all of their contributors, all of their starters. He feels that. He gets into their head. They have just have they had more energy. And once again, I do think it's going to be a conversation of talk about Ray John Rondo kind of going at Ty- Tyron Lue. But is there a player that's going to be that vocal player? Luca's a young guy, and I, I know we're surprised that Luca has – this year we saw him have so many emotions when it comes to technical, technical calls. He is – they ha- he's vocal. You need someone like that that's going to get into, the, into that mentality, into those guys' heads. heads. And, I, and I think we still haven't really seen that yet from the Clippers. The RSI department would like everybody to know that of those teams to go down 2-0, only four have come back in a series down 2-0 after losing two games at home, right? And to your point, Megan, you saw Luka, Luka does that. LeBron mm-hmm. James is yelling at Caldwell Pope, I need you to bleep and shoot the ball, right? When your leader is talking to you that way, and it emboldens you in a way that makes you comfortable taking shots in pressure situations. Unfortunately for the Clippers, Kawhi isn't that, and that may be what needs to change. Kawhi may need to go out there and start showing some type of emotion and not being so stoic. Well, right? I don't think That's, he's capable. <laughs> he's got to. Yeah. He's got to. If, if if we could put pressure on Paul George and others who step outside of their comfort, comfort zone to rise to the occasion, Kawhi's got to be able to do the same from a leadership standpoint, from a vocal leadership standpoint. He's got to be the one to step in, Ray John yelling like, yo, shut up. Here's what we need to do. And that's got to come from Kawhi. And if it's not, they're done. Mm, well, we'll see. They'll, they'll be going to Dallas so Mavericks fans, like this is your chance because you got to be loud and crazy to fuel your Dallas Mavericks team if you want to kind of get, which I would consider an upset if the Clippers were to lose this series. Uh, meanwhile, on the other flip side of things, because we have a jam-packed show today. So D'Anthony Melton's coming up here in about three minutes. So we had a conversation with him yesterday. But the Lakers, they played the Phoenix Suns. And uh, the Lakers looked a lot better than what they looked like the other night. Um, you had Phoenix kind of get down and like tie things up there in the fourth quarter and went back and forth. But the key was Anthony Davis and LeBron James stepped up, especially there in the last two minutes, hitting some clutch shots. The Anthony Davis three to me was the moment I said, okay, the Lakers are going to, are going to pull this out. And the whole entire game, I thought the, the Lakers just brought it. I mean, campaign did as well, but you're worried about Chris Paul and that shoulder. He kept going to the bench and like icing it or putting a heating pad on it. A little concerned, but the Phoenix Suns were still able to keep it close. So I do. I'm loving this series. I cannot wait for this series to continue. Yeah, Chris Paul feels like a liability, which you hate because mm-hmm. they're in this position because of Chris Paul and his veteran leadership in the playoffs. You want him on the court so badly, and him only playing seven minutes in the second half, no, not great. Mm-hmm. Um, when I decided the Lakers were going to win was when they played Marcus Gasol and he hit a three. I was like, oh, finally, you're doing it. That was right. like in the first quarter, wasn't it? No, he hit one late. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I was just that happy first to see one, him I was like, mm. because it's been – and that, I know that's a big conversation in the Lakers world is why is Marc Gasol not getting any minutes. So nice to see him in, in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then nice to see that you have two of the best five players in the NBA and they did what they're supposed to do. Like th- that, is, that is the recipe for success. That is yeah. how the Los Angeles Lakers get back to the conference finals at bare minimum is if LeBron James and Anthony mm-hmm. Davis – play like LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And defense. Period. Yeah. To, to hold oh, Devin yeah. Booker. I mean, Devin Booker did get to the free throw 17 of 17. Ah. 17 out of 17, which I look. Hey, can, give so much credit to Nicely him. done. If they have a Phoenix Suns little ad, I would be talking about free throws. <laughs> I would be talking about free throws and letting it air and play out because that is, like, tremendous. He could not hit a three. He kept getting fouled from behind the arc. Uh, the, the the Lakers try to find a solution of what you can do to contain Devin Booker, and I do think to be 0 of three from behind the arc, that's not gonna that might not happen again. But you got to give credit for for them in their defense and to hold them just to eight threes, 
So, you know, I was impressed to see the Lakers step up and, like, show out the way they did. I'm still waiting for the bench to kind of show up a little bit more. 13 points from bench points, especially the when Caruso he out. dunk to end it? Did yeah. he do it for you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I would like to see more from, from their bench. But when you have LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Andre Drummond, Yo, I hope he gets, like, everyone who was hating on Andre Drummond talking about his NBA career is over, and there's some people that work here at GCM who said that. You need to, like, give him some credit because regardless if you might not like the way he plays, he's found a home. He's found something, <laughs> and the Lakers, it, it works. It's working for them. And I really do think we got to take more time to praise people when they get to a spot in a situation where it works for him. Amazing what happens when you leave that miserable franchise in Detroit. <laughs> That's all you got to say, right? That's it. That's it. I will yeah. say the one thing. Please, NBA, I beg of you, never put two L.A. teams going up against each other at the same time on different channels. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that Clippers Mavs was on NBA TV last night while Lakers Suns was on TNT, it was a lot. It was late. You had two good games, and it felt so unfair that you had to channel surf back and forth. Yeah, well, but if you learn anything, maybe not put the Boston Celtics in the Nets game earlier because <laughs> – uh, that probably should have gone on. I know they're on the USA East Coast, Network. but that should have that should have gone somewhere. That should have gone somewhere else. Uh, we had we had another we had another, Twitch. We had another eye poke in the game, which I'm just like, man, eyes. This 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 playoffs has just been a, a real topic of conversation right now. Uh, Jason Tatum in that third quarter, but Celtics just didn't. I have nothing to say about. It. I actually watched majority of that game. I don't know how I sat there and watched majority of that game, but it's just kind of just like. Everything that we've said on the show, we don't have to be like repeating ourselves. It is just showing up. Like once again for Kawhi, Jason Tatum, someone else got to step up, and the defense. And you thought we were talking about the Nets' defense, lack of defense. Nets played better defense. Celtics, I don't, I, I have no idea what they they going back to TD Garden. They're gonna have to figure out some things. Maybe I know I've been to a TD Garden fan base. And I've seen the fans. Y'all going to have to give them something because what they showed last night was just not it. Yeah, that series, just not it no. so far. But you know what is it? It's D'Anthony Melton. Mm -hmm. And we were so excited to be joined by him yesterday. Caught up with him from Salt Lake City to preview everything ahead of tonight's big game in Utah. Take a listen. We are so excited to be joined this morning by the one and only D'Anthony Melton joining us from Salt Lake City, Utah. D'Anthony, how's it going? It's good. It's good. You know, had to get that first dub in. So, you know, we're feeling great, uh, great right now. You know, I, Anthony, this is your first time on Rise and Grind. I just want to say welcome. Better late than never. You are a hard guy to get. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> I'm actually, I've actually been here, which is crazy. I ain't oh. been nowhere else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, at least we get you when, like, the vibes are really good coming off of exactly. the first playoff win in a minute for the Memphis Grizzlies, and you get to be a part of it. Just what's it like to be a part of this team right now and to kind of be riding this wave? It's been a really exciting couple weeks for you guys. This team is uh, this team is really special. Um, we got a lot of young guys out there going out there and trying to get it, and you can tell, you know, we're all hungry um, down the line, and we all play with a lot, of, a lot of enthusiasm. Um, we want to play together, and you know we play with a lot of fight in us. So, I mean, once once you get to chirping and talking and stuff like that, I mean, like that's right up our alley, and we, we love to play like that. So, it just means we could be a little more physical, you know what I mean? So, it's good for us. You speaking of chirping and talking, we've seen a lot of that. Uh, that's what playoff basketball is all about. Xavier Tillman said that, you know, you guys aren't out there trying to pick fights, but you're definitely not one that you want to go up against and start a fight with because you guys stick together. So you come from one, you come from them all. What is that dynamic like? And is that just like the Memphis like attitude or is that just what, what this group represents? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't speak for other teams, but I mean, I feel like with us, we just, we just close, you know I mean? We just, we got each other's back. So no matter what it is, you know, we rolling for our guys. And um, I think once you realize, you know, how special this team is and how long you've been around us, I think I think you understand it. Like, you know what I mean? We rolling for no matter what, you know, you're all on our team. We family now. So, like, we got, we got everybody. Sometimes it feels like the main instigator is Dylan Brooks. And I know he's gotten a lot of attention over this last stretch of games. Dylan the villain, the brand is going strong. But what's it like to be yep. his teammate? Because we hear it from the other side of guys constantly being like, 
that's the kind of player that you just don't want to play against. But when he's on your team, he's an A1. Yeah. I, I mean, Dylan plays with a lot of passion, and we all know that. So, you know, Dylan going to be Dylan. And it is what it is, honestly. I mean, like you said, you could you could like it or you could not, but just you know, he gonna talk his he gonna talk his stuff. Uh, <laughs> he gonna do his stuff. You feel me? So it's like, hey, we roll we rolling whatever. I mean, that's our that's our dog. So he want a wolf and bark and stuff like that. We with it too there. What can you tell us? What can you tell us about Dylan that fans would be surprised? Because we see that Dylan, you know, on the court. But when he goes off the court, what is Dylan Brooks like? Dylan, he real. He real cool. Like, he he funny. Like, you know what I mean? Dylan, he's a really calm person. Like, that's, that's the wild stuff. Yeah, he, he real calm. He still he still has a lot of energy, like, off the court. But, like, you know what I mean? He's not always wolfing and barking all the time. But he's a very energetic person. Like, in random times, even when we, we'll, like, play video games or something like that, like, he's up, active, like, screaming at their TV, like, you know what I mean? So uh -huh. he's just an animated person, and that's why we love him. Are you ever just, like, chill? <laughs> <laughs> I be having to tell him, like, yo, chill, uh, like, chill, bro, you wild. <laughs> but, you know, me and Dilla, we close, so, like, kind of, we're kind of, like, two opposite people. Like, he's real, like, energetic, animated, I'm real calm, cool, stuff like that. But we, yeah, together, we funny. He's a hilarious, though. Now, D'Anthony, I know on some of our in-game broadcast stuff that we show on the big board, it was asked who has the best style. And you said that if people didn't say you, then they trip it. Now, tripping. Right, exactly. <laughs> tripping completely. Tripping. Well, Dylan's style, y'all are really close. You're completely, too, as you said, y'all are two opposites. How would you compare to his style? Would you rock the sunglasses like he's rocking the sunglasses? Yeah. I, I, I like the sunglasses. I do. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be telling them like, okay, those is nice. Those is hard. Like, this is it. I, I like the way Dylan dressed. We uh we talk about clothes like you know what I mean all the time. Like we compliment each other on each other's fits. See like okay maybe that wasn't it. Maybe this was. You know what I mean. So we always going back and forth on like clothes and stuff like that. So I I can rock some of the stuff he wear, but not all of it. I not all of it. So the real question: Have you ever worn a bucket hat? Nah, I, ain't, I don't think I got the hair that's for a bucket hat. That's not yours. What, how do you describe your style? Real, like, West Coast vibes, like, chill, calm. Um, I don't know, comfortable. Like, I don't know, I don't wear nothing too, like, tight. Something I can't move in. Like, everyday, everyday outfits. Something you can see yourself, you know what I mean, going to the store to do or, like, just going out and just – and, you know, riding around the city. So, I don't know. I don't like the too much of the designer and all that stuff, so. Hmm, okay, okay. So, it's that, it's, that, it's that West Coast vibes. Now, you talk about you want to be able to move. One thing that you guys are doing right now, you're moving and grooving when it comes to the court. I mean, yeah. this city is super excited for what you guys have been able to do, especially from the play-in. Now, you guys are in the playoffs as a team, you guys have had some days where you can practice and a day off. You know, what do you guys want to do with game two, taking on the Utah Jazz tonight? Man, take it to them. I mean, we got to deliver the first blow. You know what I mean? Because we know they're going to come out hungry. They're going to come out even more mad than they were the first game. And we should understand that, you know, they're going to be doing everything they can to make sure they don't drop this game. So we just got to come out there, you know, Throw the first punch, you might got to throw the second one too because both teams not going to back down because even when they throw the first one, we got to be ready to bounce back and respond and, you know what I mean, and understand it's a long game. Uh, I mean, even the first game, we was almost down like 15 and still came back and, you know what I mean, fought back and ended up winning. So we just got to understand it's a long game and we're going to be good and that's the whole point of series. And even if they do get this one, we got the next one. We got the next one after that, so. I think adjustments is the biggest thing for us. When you look at the Jazz and this time around, they'll have Donovan Mitchell after he missed game one. Just what does the addition of him to this Jazz team make it all the more difficult of a matchup? Uh, I mean, Don's a special player. Um, I mean, he can score from all three levels. Um, he's the engine for their team. He moves the ball. Uh, he's the aggressive one. Uh, you know, we know all this stuff coming into the game, so 
I mean, I feel like we do a great job at just, you know, sliding our feet and playing defense and no easy buckets, honestly. And you know what I mean? And just discipline. No matter what, who's out there, you got those things. I mean, it's going to be tough for them no matter what, who's out there. And we've heard a lot about what it's like playing there in Salt Lake City, City taking on the Utah Jazz. John Morant, Grayson Allen said that it is loud. It's sometimes hard for you guys to hear calls. But Grayson said that y'all play into that and y'all feed off that. What have you been hearing from the fans? And what is it like just to be around that many, like that, a large group of fans like that? <laughs> we, have, we have been in an arena like this for a minute, like for a while. So it's, it's kind of crazy to look up and see like, you know what I mean? All the white shirts and stuff like that because it was wearing white last time. So it's just crazy to see. But like you said, we feed off it. Like we like playing on the road. We like quieting, quieting people down, proving people wrong. So I feel like we have more fun on the road sometimes just because we like proving a point. Um, so we used to it. We, we like it. We like the atmosphere and especially it's the playoffs. So, I mean, if you can't get up for this, then I don't know what else. Yeah, and this is your first playoff experience, and there's so many exactly. guys on this team where it's their first playoff experience, and yet exactly. here you guys come out, find a way to come back. As you said, you were down double digits. You come back, get a win against a very good team in the Utah Jazz. When you look at the youth and that lack of experience in the playoffs, how do you think that helps you maybe in an unexpected way? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of like you got young kids going out there and just running around with a whole lot of energy. So I feel like, I mean, it's a little similar to that. Like, we just all geek to be in this moment right now. Like, it still don't feel real sometimes, especially for me. Uh, but I think we just, you know, season every moment we can um, and just, we just having fun with it. Just having fun with it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of buzz right now about just like this next gen and what we've seen in this playoffs, how a lot of these these young players coming out and making making noise and making their voice be heard, especially when it comes to the court. Uh, you guys are a lot of next gen players. Uh, what is it like to kind of be that group, though? And do you think for the Grizzlies particularly, do you think that is something that people kind of hold against you, but also say like that's why they, they call you guys the underdogs? Uh. I feel like Memphis is going to get the underdog, like, tag just because, like, it's Memphis. You know what I mean? Like, but I feel like it's the people that it's inside the organization that's really going to embrace it or not. Like, underdog, and it don't really matter. Like, we we all go out there. We all lace them, lace them up the same way. We all got to go out there, play defense, score the ball. So, I mean, we're not feeding too much into the underdog, but we know how, you know how the people be treating Memphis, so. We understand what it is and we understand like what's going on, but we don't be trying to feed into none of that stuff. But we get it though at the same time. What's the best piece of advice that you've gotten from maybe one of the guys on the team who has come in with some playoff experience? I would say probably Kyle. Probably Kyle. He talks about how, I mean, it's different, like. I mean, everybody know every possession matters. Every every loose ball, like the intensity different. You already see the fouls is a little harder. It's a little more physical. You got to finish through a little more contact. Um, I think they were just saying all that type of stuff. Like it's not gonna be easy. Playoffs are not gonna be easy. And teams and scouted. I mean, this is a season right here. So team scout OD. <laughs> You know, scout everything. So you just got to be ready for everything out there. And you just got to get stops. I mean, playoffs are all about defense. Who's going to get more stops? Because you realize people can score, but who, you know what I mean, who's going to be able to stop the man in front of them? And you guys have been known for having great defense and being physical. You guys have been that team throughout the whole entire season. And something else is you guys have been known for is that second unit, that bench group that you're a part of. What is so special about you guys? And why does it seem like y'all just mesh no, no matter who's out there on the court? We just play the right way. We just like to play the right way. I mean, and it's constantly, you know, constantly making the right play no matter what. Um, and we just understand, you know, what it takes to win. Uh, we, it's not going to be one guy that's going to win it all, you know what I mean? So we understand that it takes a team. And the more you move the ball, the less people are going to want to play defense. And a lot of people can guard that first side or second side, but it's just once you constantly move the ball, 
it, they eventually break down, just get easy shots, honestly. So we just want to cut, you know, make sure everybody's getting easy shots. And I feel like that's what we be doing. We begin stops, running in transition, and see who can keep up with us. What do you think about your nickname, Mr. Do Something? Do you like it? Are you cool with it? <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't mind it. <laughs> if you it's could... not like, you feel me? I get it, but it's, it is what it is. I don't be tripping about it. <laughs> if you could like pick it. a nickname for yourself, yeah. would you change it? Would you want to be something called something else? Like, here's your time. Tell us what you want <laughs> us to name you. Nah, I like I like Mr. Do Something. I like okay. Mr. Do something for for, for what I'm doing right now. Um, I mean, all my nicknames I just got from like friends and family. So I don't know. I don't really got like a hoop nickname besides like D Mel. But other than that, no, nah, I like I like Mr. Do something. All right, Different. Mr. Do, Mr. Do something. It is. I like it. It just rolls off the tongue. It really does. And you exactly. said that you you don't you know for what you're trying to do right now. What part and aspects of your game are you you know wanting to improve on as you guys move forward in the playoffs? Uh, for me, I just want to improve on you know playmaking. Obviously, uh, continue to become a better playmaker. Uh, find an open guy, um, lobs, pocket passes, all that stuff. But also, I mean continue to work on my offensive game, just the whole side of it. Um, I took a jump in my shooting this year. So, I mean, I'm happy about that. But, you know, just taking my game to the next step and just know there's more and more to become. Um, I'm not satisfied, you know what I mean? Never going to be satisfied. So I feel like I can get better in every aspect of my game, like no matter what, from my offense to my defense to discipline to, you know what I mean, all that stuff. All right. It's a game night. What are you doing in your pregame routine? What are you listening to right now to get amped for the game tonight against the Jazz? Uh, let's see. I'm probably going to throw some young boy in there, throwing some, some probably some little dirt. Uh, I'll be throwing in my L.A. rappers. Got to throw them in there. Uh, I don't know. It just depends whatever mood I'm in, like. If I'm up, I'll be listening to the ups up, you feel me? But if I'm, like, calm and, you know, I'm trying to relax and stuff like that, probably listen to, like, slower stuff, my thoughts are holding in there. What is calm music for D'Anthony like? Like, would be surprised? <laughs> like, R&B, like, R&B, uh, maybe some, like, oldies, some, like, 80s, you know what I mean, 90s. Yeah, I got that, too. So, I don't know. Anything that's calm, like, R&B. Like Luther Vandross calm or listen to Luther. Ooh, I'll listen to him as much now, but I'll I'll, I'll listen to him. Some Anthony Hamilton. Um uh, I think. Uh Smokey Robinson. Um I kind of think. Oh, so, Anthony, so. Anthony coming up with the old school. See, there's nothing young about there's nothing young about you. Feel me? Old soul. <laughs> old soul. Oh, so there you go. And my birthday coming up, too. Hey, when, when is when's it? your birthday? May 28th. Ooh. Right around cool. the corner. Any birthday plans? Do you think the guys will surprise you this week? Hey, better. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm, my no. family coming out. My family coming out, so I think I might just be with them. They, hopefully, they might got some plan for me. Mm. A little surprise at my house, but it's whatever. Awesome. All right. Well, do anything. I, I got to get a secret from you, okay? Because mm. this was posted earlier today. And if you could just tell us what's happening here, we said caption this. <laughs> okay. Tell us what was going on right now. What was being said in Ja's ear? Uh, ja was talking to me. Uh, we was talking about some, And I think that was it. Oh, come oh, on. Oh. You got to give us the key. <laughs> Oh, you want? Oh, I'm sorry. Now nah, it was just the fans was talking a little bit. It was chirping and stuff like that, and he was just like, I mean, they was talking. Y'all saw the interaction they had. He was just like, yeah, they don't mean they don't know. I got my peoples in the crowd too, so I said, yeah, they all they all in there. Yeah, <laughs> they know we we run deep. We run deep, yeah. so just know they, his peoples for sure gonna show up. <laughs> I'll give him that. <laughs> Well, you guys are always one of the most 
gifable, memeable, likable teams. It's just one more example of you guys having so much fun. And we look forward to seeing you out on the court. Big smile. And hopefully you guys can get another win tonight in Utah. Yeah, and, and D'Anthony, we'll see you guys soon. You said you got y'all, we run deep. Memphis runs deep. And so Memphis cannot wait. And they're so oh, excited yeah. for you guys to return at FedEx Swarm. Do you have a PSA for fans for when you guys return on Saturday and Monday night here in Memphis? PSA. I know y'all got nothing to do. Come show out Memphis game, game three, game four. Uh, we lit, we turned, playing all the music, all the Memphis, and it's Memphis versus everybody. You already know what it is, man. For sure, for sure. Last time I said for sure, we had another for sure in there. For sure, for sure. That's Period. Perfect. That's it. Period, okay. yeah. There's nothing else to say. That's it. Already. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours, or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now, during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood, where custom design is our specialty. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Ashley Home Store is proud to call Memphis home. We believe your personal style makes your house into a home. Discover incredible styles, selection, and quality at a price to fit any budget. Ashley Home Store has just the looks and options you need. Explore totally different styles and trends all in one place. Finding the perfect furniture, mattresses, and home decor makes it easy for you to create a home you love to live in. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store, proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Summer starts here at your local Toyota dealers. Now through June 1st, lease an adventurous new 21 RAV4 LE for $199 a month for 36 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. That's just $199 a month for a new RAV4 with two years no cost maintenance included. Call 1-888-36-TOYOTA for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Alrighty, welcome back to Rise and Grind. That was a great D. Anthony Mel interview from yesterday. So thank you, D. Mel, Mr. Do Something, for joining us. And now we go from one of our, our favorite people to another favorite person. I hear so him. I hear people. him. Right from D. Anthony <laughs> to D. Angelo. What did do, D. Angelo? You see the sun's right over my head. You got uh, a halo. I, I feel like 
I, I like to think I have the glow today. Yeah, I think <laughs> I like it. I like to think I have the glow. I got a question though. Oh, that's a ready. very serious question, and I want to make sure that I, I pre-reference it or preface it with this. Let's okay. just stick to the. So there's there's levels to this. I just want to stick to this one level, okay? Okay. So I don't want to talk about drunk driving. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about whether it's right or wrong. What I want to talk about it's wrong. is the, <laughs> is the threshold, the threshold in which, like, not how many drinks it takes. What's your thought process when you know, like, is there a test where you just like, hey, I can't drive because I'm drunk versus, oh, I'm OK to drive because I'm not drunk. I just been drinking. Like, what is that threshold where you tell yourself, like. Is there a test? Because, again, I don't drink. And I, I, I think I've only been drunk once in my entire life. I was 21 years old. I was in college. And driving wasn't even a thing. Everybody had had my back in terms of, like, so I, I didn't have to make that decision. So I'm at the bar. I've had, uh, you know, three or four drinks. Is there a feeling that come over you to be like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm drunk? Or is it one of those things where it's just based on your decision like, oh, I can get home. You see what I'm saying? I want to I wanna know what that thought process in is right before you make that decision on whether I should drive versus whether I've had too many drinks, I need to call somebody to come get me. I want to know what your thought process was in this being the question to open well, this, 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 this is the question. I got a homeboy that's a police officer, and he okay. pulled a guy over that was drunk at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. And I was like, damn. That's rough, but I wanted to know what his thought process was after he, whether it was at home, whether it was at a bar, mm -hmm. at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, there's nothing wrong with getting drunk, but there's something wrong with drunk driving. So I was like, I want to understand the thought process of a person that has been drinking that think like, oh, I can make it home. Not knowing, like, do they not know that they're drunk? I, I, I don't know. I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I take the most overly cautious approach and I Uber everywhere. That's not the wrong. That's not like, the wrong person to ask. That's right, the right but person like I to won't. Even, I won't even have more than a glass of wine, and mm -hmm. or a beer, and if usually even if I'm having one, I don't want to risk it. It's yeah. it's too important. It does not matter. I, it drives people crazy because I will pay for a thirty dollar Uber out to East Memphis if I'm going to drink at dinner. Mm -hmm. And then I will pay for that back. But for me, it's worth it because I would never, ever, ever, you know, best case scenario, you don't hurt anyone and you just mm -hmm. have to pay a massive fee and you lose your license and that stinks. Worst case scenario, something tragic happens. It's not worth it to me. So that's where mm -hmm. I stand on it. And I don't drink. drink. So, <laughs> I mean, I will tell right. you that I did back in the past and I'm a big believer in like, you know, after one, you know, have someone else drive you like usually usually you're around someone anyway yeah. and that's but i'm going off of like i haven't drank like that since like college and younger younger years of life and so if you are it was you always had that one person anyway if you're if i'm planning on drinking one it's always a plan of like oh someone else is coming with me we're gonna do this if it's dinner usually the other person's like oh i'm good you go ahead if you want to partake but more than one to me is where you should go and i do think we live in different times right now because you have uber yeah as you mentioned i'm options. i'm a big big advocate of just just uber just live it's more fun anyway you can like sit there get your mind right and you can drink whatever you want you don't right. it doesn't even have to be in the back of your head like, yeah you just and i do think there is no for someone who look you know what we think is right or wrong in the sense of like should someone be drinking that early I don't think that they were thinking there was no thought process for that individual. If it was, there was their thought is, wasn't the right thought, obviously. Were they drunk from the night before or was it? No, like, that, if you're, it's, if it's I've, new. I've heard of some people who have like been so drunk and then they've gotten up, got in the car, gone to work, got pulled over and got a DUI because their blood alcohol content was still so high from the night before that it carried over. But that's still, there's no that thought process. That always scared me like you, there, you, didn't have, you didn't have the right thought process to even like right. still I, do that. I, I want to get what CJ think, and this goes into the, 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 the realm of things that I don't understand. I don't understand how people can get blackout drunk, not remember what happened the night before, and said that they had a great time, they felt like crap, and then do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how people are able to do that because I, I, I have 
friends that have done it. And it was like, oh, and I feel like trash. I'm never doing it again. And I call them at like 430. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just drinking. Like, but you just said that you wasn't I, like, I don't understand that. And it absolutely blows my mind because, you know, you know who get that backlash? Your friends get that backlash because we have to hear you complain and talk about how awful you feel and how you had a good time. And you're like, oh, well, what happened? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I blacked out. Well, how was it fun? Like, oh, man, you should have been there. Hell, the way you talking, you should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, D'Angelo, you always you want to hear from I, CJ. I, I, CJ, right. do you, I, what CJ, do you have for the conversation? <laughs> that, that thought process, because, again, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm having a couple drinks. And again, there's nothing illegal about having a couple drinks. There is something illegal about driving drunk. So, I, you know, maybe I'm a chronic drinker. I drink a lot. And I've had four beers, a couple shots. Like, is that too much? To one person it is, but to another one, like, I'm just warming up. Uh, so as somebody who has uh, been hit by a drunk driver, if you're drinking, like, don't drive. So for me, I know before I go out what I plan on doing. I know, okay. like, okay, this is a, I'm, this is a turn up type situation. Let me uh, take the necessary precautions so I don't drive. Um, so I usually ride with somebody somewhere, or we Uber together somewhere, and it's okay. We're gonna Uber back home, so I know, or I'm just gonna stay the night at some pl- somebody else's house, or I'm going to be at my house when I do this. Um, but so here's a real life example. Southern Heritage Classic is my jam. I love me some some classic football. And that is a turn up event Um, from the parade through the the fifth quarter. I am ready to go. But my wife is not that type of drinker. So she's the one that drives. We already know we make plans. And when I get home from the parade, before we go out to the tailgate, I'm I'm drinking gallons of water. You you know, at a certain age, you know what your body needs to be able to function (laughs) the right way. So drink water, drink Pedialyte or Gatorade or vitamin water, whatever it is that you got to drink to make sure you're right. Drink that in the process of your your day drinking or your casual drinking or what have you um, so that you're not sloppy because that that is another issue. And then you get sloppy, you get behind the wheel and now your boy doesn't have a car because you decided to drink and drive. Right. I I barely I didn't barely. I was fine. My car was completely total. There's the car. Oh, right there. Yeah. Like head on collision. Oh, yeah. Like that was that was real. Um, And so I, I strongly discourage people. From drinking and driving. It, w- it was off Whitten Road. Uh, I was turning to go left. I had the light. The car clearly didn't have the light and just boom, plowed through me. 180 degree turn, right? Like drinking and driving is dangerous. It's you. If you think you've had too much, you've had too much. Don't drive. If you don't think you've had too much, don't, don't drive. Don't drive. <laughs> like get somebody else to drive. Yeah. Like Megan said, we've got Uber and Lyfts now. Like you can get somebody to come pick you up. And just plan ahead. If you're mm-hmm. in college, plan ahead. Like, yo, I'm drinking. Y'all got me tonight. Yes. If you don't got friends who can who got you when you go out drinking, you don't need to go out drinking yeah. then, mm-hmm. right? So that that's my thoughts on the whole situation. CJ, oh whole PSA. snap, CJ. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't know that that's where we were going with this, but I love it, CJ. Damn man, CJ Corner is like booming. That's why it's the champions <laughs> corner, D'Angelo. Only champions reside here. <laughs> now I'm back without a car for a different reason. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> sun's inching down. The sun's inching down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's that was the question that I had okay. because I asked him as a police officer. I said, "Hey, man, did you ask him what was his train of thro- thought when he decided to get behind the wheel?" He was like, "No." I said, well, as a cop, wouldn't that be one of your questions? So once you get that question, you know how to combat this when you talk to other people. He was like, no, I'm doing my job. His ass going to jail. I was like, yeah, I understand that. But like now you could pass on information to your friends like, hey, man, you see somebody taking shots back at the bar because as a community, that's the only way that we can fight drunk driving as a community. We at a bar. We chilling, we drinking our water, our pineapple juice or whatever it may be. We see a guy kicking back, you know, 14, 15 shots. He done had a bad day. We walk over and say, hey, man, you okay? Yeah, man, you know, I had this, 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 and this. Well, you know, I I, I don't know what your driving situation is, but I can get you an Uber or a Lyft or something like that, man. He was like, oh, no, man, 
I got it. You know, I've drank more than this before. Like as a person, I feel like it's our responsibility to 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 say, hey, now you need to take this Uber or you need to take this Lyft because I'm a firm believer that it take a community or it take a village to raise a kid. And just because you grown don't necessarily mean that you still don't fall under that community guidelines of raising a kid because you never grow up. It's going to always be somebody older than you. So I, I just feel like, again, what, after CJ just showed that, this is definitely a PSA for those out there that do drink. Mm-hmm. Especially for I mean, anyone that's watching and fans who are coming out this weekend. It yeah. is a holiday weekend. The Grizzlies will be playing here at FedEx Forum. We are all very excited about it. But, you know, make smart decisions as things start opening up again. That is, that is a great uh, reminder for us all when, you know, restaurants, yeah. bars are opening up games are taking place like be very careful be safe take a uber um have a friend have a friend on speed dial um just make the best decision we do have a question for you d'angelo because people in the chat want to know yes. are you going to be in memphis at the forum this weekend they want to know if you're coming to come to the games no nah, i won't be at the, the games this weekend but i can tell you this though i just ordered a lot of memphis grizzly merchandise from my winnings in the first uh See, I, I don't know about y'all, but I bet on games. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, 100%, I'm going to tell you, I bet on games. Yeah, with friends, family. Uh, yeah, I, I don't go out and book it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like hold on, D'Angelo. Casino. Wait, wait, D, D, hold up, hold up. Ladies, can we talk about this? Well, no. he can talk about it, but yeah. we can't. Yeah, we, do can we do not. We do not. We do not. Y'all, y'all do not believe in bet on games. That's what I'm saying. Like, I bet on games from a standpoint of, like, you know, gentleman's bet. It's never more than, like, $10, $15. I'm lying. But it ain't never more than that. So it's not <laughs> like it's no, no harm, no foul. But, yeah, I was able to. So we didn't actually bet. We bet, like, gear, like merchandise. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, We're going to put a shopping spree on it because everybody has a Utah Jazz, like, absolutely crushing us. And then, you know, D. Brooks and, you know, John ja Moran and, I, our whole, you know, our crew, Jason, they stepped up, they played well. So, you know what? I'm going to be decked out. I'm hardly home, but I'm always repping. All, <laughs> hey. all, always. That, that sun is creeping down. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> I, got a, I got a LeBron James headband on right now. It does so look you can't like see that. It. Alex Caruso head. That's, 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 that's the Alex Caruso headband. That's what it is. <laughs> now, I will say, so what, what, what did you order and what are you excited about coming Oh, I ordered everything. I I God. wasn't paying, so damn, I ordered everything. It Did didn't you get even jerseys? matter. Like, Where'd I, you get? I, I ordered some stuff that wasn't even my size because they didn't have it in my size straight from the shop. So I my thing, my thought process is this. If I can't purchase tickets or actually be there in person, I'm going to support through the team store, and I'm going to support okay. through the team store with somebody else's money that lost the bet. <laughs> Well, that's we're the happy. best thing to do is right. using other people's money to so buy next Wednesday, merchandise. Next Wednesday, you're going to come on our show decked out in gear. It'll be another Grizzlies game day. Yeah. A- absolutely. 100%. I I'm, I'm, I got more Grizzly stuff. I'm pretty sure. And I, I, I can. I, we could go Grizzly gear item for Grizzly gear item. I probably got more than you, Megan, and Jessica combined because Definitely. we know y'all wrench out folks. <laughs> I have a I have an extensive collection yeah. of Grizzlies gear. Megan ha- Megan's from here. Yeah, <laughs> she has everything. I have mean? like four shirts in rotation. <laughs> you have more than that. <laughs> Maybe six. <laughs> You're no. We we gave you four from for junior. Yeah. In, we gave you five exactly. for junior I NBA mean, week. The junior NBA. The, right. Yeah, the but junior still, NBA. They but they're all five. junior NBA. They're great. I Grizzlies love them. Gear. I love them. I know it has the Grizzlies logo. I on went it. shopping with you guys. That we, is where I have. She got four. more than that. She's got more. She's 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 she's, she's being enough. dramatic. I she's don't being dramatic have here. Enough. <laughs> she's, you don't so have enough, I, but she's got more. I, I just got to ask you this question, and and this will end it. Do you have a Stromile Swift jersey? No, no, I'm not a jersey person. I don't have a jersey. Either. Oh, okay. Right. I'm not, well, okay. I guess I'm not, I say that say that loosely. I have a Marcus Saul jersey. I have a Zebo, and I believe a Tony Allen jersey. But she's not a jersey. But person. I'm not a jersey person. <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> but I'm not a jersey person. I know. And then I have a plain one that I've always said that they, oh, they gave that's you. Four. But she they has gave as many jerseys as I have shirts. They gave it to you. I was I was hoping my my thought process was, was always to like get my I'm gonna get my name on it and then. <laughs> Now it's just turned into there. Like I don't know what to do with things. I'm not gonna wear. I don't wear jerseys, so you know. 
And then yeah. in my sense, I've always thought, you know, they're they're great like lounge wear clothes when you're at the house. But then I'm like, you can't do that because they're so nice. You, you might it might be. This is Jersey dress something. summer. I'm I've not seen wearing so Jersey many dress. girls go the Jersey dress route. I'm not. I see them can't, a lot here at it. the game. I see a can't lot of Jersey it. dresses. But I, it's like D'Angelo said. A lot of times you don't. They don't have your size. You just got to get whatever you can get. I got a lot of X, yeah. XL stuff. Like yeah. you just got to get what you got to get, and those turn become like just like nightgowns. You just go to bed. I, where to bed. I, I, I was trying to find a I've been there. politically correct way to I, say I, it. I, I do have a question <laughs> for this. I, I know it's 2021. It's been yeah. a pandemic. And we've been locked up. Is it ever okay to go ballroom dress and heels to a basketball event or to any sporting event? No, other like than a ball the Kentucky dress? Derby? A ball dress, you oh, said? Yeah. Like a ball gown. A, a ballroom dress. No. You know mm. how you, you, you've you seen those people at games where they, no. you just like, dang. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that. Far. I've worn heels too. I mean, I've worn heels in a dress, but not like a. I mean, like if you skipped, like let's say but that you're your working, team was in the Megan, playoffs. I'm talking about somebody that's coming there as a fan. Not a ball gown. I will say I've, I have seen like a very formal form of dress, and it was someone that was leaving an event that was like at the that's Peabody, what I was say. and there were a lot of people coming. They had a suite, they had a box, and they were just coming to like you know the party continues. We're going down to the Grizzlies game. I thought that's got to that's kind of cool when you when you're in a group yes. i've never seen like a solo dolo person like it, you know i'm with my dude and you know it's a date I night and here i nice. come out in this like silk <laughs> floor length gown i got the curls and an updo and some heels no 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 you're at the wrong spot my friend yeah only if you're like coming from a wedding yeah an event prom if you were in high school and like your team was playing and you wanted to that's taking out. it to another level <laughs> that, those are the only people i see in ball gowns downtown prom oh my god yes there are proms down here oh, all the time they were here but for, the for both plays no, no not i'm saying a hypothetical situation oh okay no, no, like no. I've, I've never seen anyone in a ball gown period oh <laughs> what i no, have at, i see them all the time at a game at a game yes uh, what game that's are you going to the reason why i brought it up what game are you going to uh, no when i so when i was when i went to watch the grizzlies it was the uh -huh. second round of the playoffs i think it was the second round of the playoffs we were doing our growl towels and this lady walked by in like a ballroom dress and like uh, some heels. And I was I was like, ooh, don't look. Don't look. You're with the wife. Don't look. And I'm like, OK. All right. <laughs> like, she obviously noticed. She obviously noticed. Like, CJ know what I'm going through here. Like, as soon as I look, my wife going to be like, did you see her in that ball gown? And I was like, just don't look like fight it, fight it. I was looking out my peripheral, though, and I was I like, man, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the dress is aggressive, but like she wearing it, it's just not the right setting. <laughs> and so finally, like you know, we were we were on our way home, and my wife was like, "Honey, did you see that lady in the that ballroom?" I was like, "No, I didn't. Well, I was just looking at the game." <laughs> just be <laughs> honest. You no, you don't, D'Angelo. Yes, you could have said yes, said yes to that because it wasn't like you're like you were checking her out, like you know, giving looking her up and down. It was more of like I, a did you see question. that? Did you see that outfit? Because mm -hmm. she saw it too. Right. Only when it's when like a, when not, if it was a tight, 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 tight dress that might have been a little couple two sizes too small, and or it was very very low cut, and you're looking like did you? That's different. But if you're just looking at someone because of the entire outfit, that it's like kind of like oh that's kind of odd. But when it's, I will say that because when it's something, you you do have to wait for the lady to say something. When it's when it's short, tight, like did you see her? Like, you you have to wait for her because oh, I've been with the guy who said that before. Like did you trick see that dress? No, you could not have it's seen that dress question. because I could have seen that dress, but you cannot look until I tell you to look at that dress. So you gotta, uh, gotta I'm, pretend. D. Trick question. I'm staying away yeah. from it all together. Yeah. I ain't seen nothing. You're nervous. I was asleep. <laughs> huh? Especially after the fact, D'Angelo. After the fact, it's a setup. If she wanted to talk to you about that dress, she would have brought it up when that dress walked by. After the fact, you got to be like, no, I didn't even see that. What are you talking about? Routinely, routinely, my wife will bring up stuff after the fact. And I just lie, like, no, I didn't even notice that. I must have blinked. When, uh, I, I was so focused on you, baby. You're so beautiful. And I don't see any other woman. Um, got no, a 90s r and that. I hate uh, when guys do that. Yeah, that, whatever. That, that's when it's obvious. When I ask you something, and that's when it's very obvious. And I say, did you see that? Oh, sweetheart, I'm only looking at you. She ain't got nothing on you. I'm like, did nobody say all that? See, that's why I wouldn't. I wouldn't say she had. I wouldn't say she had anything on me. Well, duh, if she ain't got nothing on Megan, me. Like, it, why are you bringing it if up? If it's at the she, time, that's something on me. See, that's how my mind works. If it's at the time, then it's like, no, I didn't see it. Then you pretend like you didn't see it. Right. And look like, oh, there that is. 
Um, but if it's after the fact, no, you lie like you didn't see it. I'm okay with that, yeah. but don't ever say like, "Oh, baby girl, it's all it's all you." Right. Well, what you don't, what you don't oh understand God, is you. if you wait that long and then you talk about it in the car, then she think it's still on your mind. Like, well, dang, you remembered it. You, you forgot- remembered it because so y'all it's- y'all y'all have memories mm-hmm. of like a five year old child. So the fact that you got to the car, you walked through the garage, probably paid for the parking ticket, and then you got in the car and said, "Oh yeah, I saw it, it was purple." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that detail <laughs> on the back. <laughs> That's when we like re- rewind. Nah, hold up. But just but just so you guys know. For us young ladies, we do see men too. We don't ever tell yeah. y'all. So you know, here, the same here, thing. We there's, value. There's a, like, I, I do want to make sure it's a double six, standard now. I nice want to make sure it's a double standard because my suit. wife mm. can tell me like suit. her celebrity crushes, yeah. a guy that looked cool, and I'd yeah. be like, yeah, uh huh. I mean, he was cool because my thought process is this: if if I can call a guy ugly, I can say a guy is good looking too because I'm judging him either way. So I'd be like, oh yeah, that was a good looking guy, and I'm like, yeah, I can walk past a woman. And be like, dang, man, her wrist look cool. Oh, you don't like my wrist? Like, I, I didn't That's say not, that. That's not, well, saying, no. Like, it was the dang before. That's what it was. When you, when you say dang, that's what. See, there's there's, there's ways of saying things. Oh, and there's like there's oh, a okay. method to it. There's a scientific method to how you say things. You have to go through every single step. Does Chris that, do that, JB? I'm on an island here. We all look at. Every, that's like human nature is when someone attractive walks by hey, you're going yes. to look so we have a no like we just talk about everyone and i'll give them a hard time about it but like i'm not gonna get my feelings hurt if some lovely looking woman walks by and chris is like his eyes get a little big because that's, that's what you do uh-uh. and then sometimes no, the I'm eyes like, can't oh, get big you gotta <laughs> i understand that she was hot then when a guy walks by and he's got a six-pack i'm like damn he's got nice abs and then he'll be like don't I have nice abs? And I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, that, I couldn't go in my I just relationship. Don't care. I, I feel like go. there is so much of that that goes on constantly. It would drive me crazy if I got in my feelings about it all the time. But you don't think so, in your feelings, no. but what, I don't think you got to talk about it. Like, it, it, it's a sense of how you do it. Or if it's like a girl just walks by, like, dang, she's really gorgeous. Like, it's different. It's more when it's a part of the conversation. If you're just sitting down, like, oh, she's pretty. She is. Yeah. But what was like a dang? She looks good. Like, hold up. Respect. If there's a respect level between a relationship. I wouldn't do it to my man. I hope you wouldn't do it to a, another young lady. Yes, there are beautiful people in the world. We can all agree to that. That's what Instagram is. Feel like the most but beautiful person in the world. My That's wife. The most important. My wife would be like, "Dog, do you see that ass?" And I'd be like, "Oh, she's wearing nice shoes. Look at that right there." <laughs> Look at the no, necklace. See, I like Chris, the necklace. Chris, when I do that, Chris will go, no, what ass? <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup. Y'all do that it all one. the time. It is a setup. I, I'll tell you what my brother did, though. My brother was in a conversation with his wife, and they were talking, and some chick, like, walked by, and he stopped the conversation that he was having with his wife because he was looking at her, and I was like, he was like, I didn't do anything wrong. I said, bro. Even if she do, just say something, because if you don't say anything, it's going to be bad for the next couple of days because everything that she bring up is going to be in relation to I bet if I was that girl that was walking by to stop you in your conversation. Like, it's just I I, I I don't understand how women are like that because we are not like that at all. We just be like, like you like, oh, he's fine. Like, why don't you look like that? Well, he don't know you. (laughs) Because <laughs> oh. he did. <laughs> That's our way of combating stuff. Y'all go like all the way left as women, like all the way left. Like it is either all or nothing. We crack jokes, move on. It's not a joke with y'all. Because usually y'all are not a joke. That's why <laughs> <laughs> the joke is rooted in reality. <laughs> right. That is that is exactly why. That is exactly why. Well, D'Angelo. Like always, you brought up some interesting conversations. And, you know, whether you're looking at other men and women, one thing that we are looking at is the Grizzlies. And it is a game day. I know you will be watching tonight. Grizzlies take on the Utah Jazz. Uh, Continue to look at those guys because they're looking good out there on the court. And that's all that matters. Absolutely. Before we go, though, can you give me a prediction of the score tonight? Ooh, prediction of the score. I got to see what Donovan Mitchell looks sport. like. I, I don't know. What Don, I don't really I really want to know what Donovan Mitchell is going to look like. Is he going to be where he looks fully healthy? Is he going to be a limited minutes? I think that de- determines a lot when it comes to like the score and what this group is going to look, how the game's going to play out. So your prediction. I don't have a prediction <laughs> of the score. I have a prediction in here, but I'm not going to say it out here. 
Oh, oh, that means okay. Oh, I, I like the Grizzlies by six. By six. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a high score in the fair. I think it'll be a uh, one hundred five to ninety nine. That's not really a high scoring I affair. High scoring affair. <laughs> it's not really high. I, okay. I mean, I don't. I mean, is that not high when you when you eclipse the hundred point mark? Is that not high? Not one hundred five to. Not an NBA 99. game now. Not nowadays. But that that's a great defensive game. That means there's some great defense being played. So really? In that one. Oh, gone are the days when Michael Jordan and they used Those to really th- play basketball. <laughs> So Legit. we're going to get into this GOAT conversation. We ain't going to do it, though, because I know we got to go. That's my music that CJ playing. Okay. That mean I got to go. Okay. Bye. All right. D'Angelo, yeah. we'll talk to you soon next Wednesday. Grizz Gear. Can't wait to see you rock Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. rock everything, Grizz, so I need y'all to match okay. my energy. Okay. okay. The sun's going down to your mouth now, so we're going to close. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> see? Perfect. Talk to you soon, D'Angelo. Bye. <laughs> All right, coming up after the break, Mike Wallace just walked in studio, so he'll join us to give us his mic check minute, and we will preview the Grizzlies game tonight, taking on the Utah Jazz, and we'll hear from Coach Jenkins and some players. We will be right back. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Summer starts here at your local Toyota dealers. Now through June 1st, get $1,000 customer cash on any new 21 Highlander or Highlander Hybrid. Or lease a new Highlander L for $289 a month for 36 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. That's just $289 a month for a Highlander. With two years no cost maintenance included. Call 1-888-36-TOYOTA for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, everybody, welcome into the corner. Here's a story that you may have missed. Andrew Wiggins, Jessica's favorite basketball player, has committed to play for Team Canada for the first time since the FIBA America Cup in 2015. His addition is a big boost for a Canadian squad that has to win the qualifying tournament in order to get a spot in the Tokyo Olympics. Canada is coached by former NBA coach Leah Nick Nurse and has to get through China and Greece in Group A of the qualifying tournament before getting to the knockout round. The qualifiers start June 29th and end July 4th. Naomi Osaka earned $55 million last year, placing her among Sportico's top earning athletes for the calendar year and making her the highest earning woman on the list. Her $55 million earned was a record for any woman athlete in a calendar year and placed her 15th overall on the list. Osaka only earned $5 million in prize money, which means the other $50 million came just from endorsements, placing her behind only Roger Federer, LeBron James, and Tiger Woods for most endorsement money made this year. Serena Williams also made Sportico's top 100 earners list at number 44, making her and Osaka the only two women on the list. We got some sound from Grizzlies practice and a mic check minute from Mike Wallace next on Rise and Grind. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. Friday, December 3rd at FedEx Forum. With special guests, the Marcus King Band. You want to drink a water, got to go to the well. And Yola. Take a ride out in the country. I can be Yola. On sale now. Buy tickets at LiveNation.com or the FedEx Forum box office. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow.
I think our guys have shown that all season long. You know, that's part of our mentality, the competitive bunch we got. Um, obviously, you know, in the playoffs, your physicality has got to go up to another level. It's stuff we've been talking about the last couple of weeks about how we got to raise our level in a lot of different facets of our game, our discipline, our attention to detail, our, our communication, our togetherness, obviously our physicality, and and just our just desire and want even more. Um, but the focus has got to stay on us. Um, obviously, it was a com highly competitive game. There's physicality. Uh, there's a lot of emotions, um, but I thought our guys, for the most part, did a pretty decent job. You know, made those guys their first ever playoff experience. Um, just, you know, keeping that edge and, and keeping that focus. That's a, that's what we got to do, and it's always about us. Um, so that's kind of what we've been talking about, and luckily these guys have embraced it. They're talking about it themselves uh, before I have to even address it sometimes. Well, we were able to, uh, after the first game in the locker room, just kind of take it in, appreciate it, and, and put it in our back pocket. Um, but definitely looking into this next game is being ready for their, their pressure, being ready for their physicality that they're going to have and still being able to play our game. Um, you know, they like to shoot three, so just making sure that we're there, we're contesting, um, and we're on our P's and Q's defensively. Donovan Mitchell's obviously probably going to play in game two, so what can you guys maybe take away from facing him in those first two games in the regular season to now knowing kind of what he's going to expect, whether or not he's, you know, that ankle's fully right? Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, I expect him to to play and be ready. I'm, I don't think any of us are, are betting on a, his ankle being a little sore. I think even if it is, he's not going to play like it is. So uh, you have to be ready for him at full strength. And um, he's, he's a guy you have to focus in on on the defensive end. You can't let him get comfortable because um, he can obviously score at an extremely high level. So um, for us, it's, um, you know, another guy we have to lock in on and and try to make things as hard as as hard as we can for him on the offensive end. I mean, he's an unbelievable player. Obviously, he's going to add another dimension to what they can do offensively and defensively. You know, we'll be prepared for what he brings. Um, you know, did that before game one. Obviously, uh, more of a focus will kind of shift to him a little bit. But we understand the the depth that you know the Jazz have and how many how many playmakers they have. Obviously, he's a, an elite playmaker. Um, but he plays a great force getting downhill. Uh, finishing, floating, uh, he's got great balance, uh, you know, a good three-point shooter, good playmaker. Uh, he's just going to add another elite playmaker to an already, uh, you know, stacked team with a bunch of playmakers. And then just, you know, the physicality and aggressiveness that he plays with, uh, the spirit that he plays with, just is another dynamic that, you know, we've got to be accounted for. Um, but, you know, he's definitely a focal point for sure uh, amongst a, a great depth. We expect uh, physicality. We expect... Uh trying to go at us from the start, you know, that's that's what we're ready for. And uh, they're a good team. They're going to do it. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to respond. We're going to try to do everything to, to resist physicality. And, uh, you know, other end, we're going to play with physicality. We, we know what, what, what was working for us first game, what we need to fix in the second game. So, yeah, we, we're ready. We, we watched a lot of film. We... We, we did a lot of scouting, and then we're ready to play game two. Uh, it was honestly really fun. It's it's really fun to play in that kind of environment with it being loud the whole game and, um, you know, erupting in, in boos when we go on a run or we make a big play or cheering when they hit a shot or go on a run. It's a really fun environment to play with, and it, it gives you a lot of energy. And um, actually, I think it kind of helped us um, being kind of in a – first playoff game like we we have a lot of guys that love playing and and these kind of games with a big crowd and feed from that and get energy from that so um i think that kind of we we like that and we we play into that um it's funny we we are uh, a team that focuses on us so the main thing is if we see you know somebody you know trying to attack one of our guys that's the last thing you want to do because you know then we're even more together we're more focused um, and we're more lethal just because now, you know, we're, we're trying to prove a point. So I think our thing is we're, we definitely are not just going out looking for a fight, but we're not the ones to pick on either. We are not the ones to pick on, Mike. <laughs> I love that soundbite from Xavier Tillman from practice yesterday. And, Mike, the Grizzlies are getting ready to take on another fight, taking on the Jazz in game two out yeah. in Utah. You heard the players from um, practice yesterday. Uh, what you got for me for your Mike check minute? Well, Megan, I was on those uh, some of those Zoom calls yesterday as well, and one of them stood out to me, and that was the one Mike Conley had uh, from the Utah Jazz to start it off. And he was asked about 
the hunger that this Grizzlies team is playing with right now. And it was one that he recognized because in 2011, Mike Conley was on the court with the Memphis Grizzlies for that eighth seeded Grizzlies team that knocked off the number one seeded San Antonio Spurs. And Mike said that he saw a lot of the same hunger. He played with that hunger when he was with the eight seeded Grizzlies then. He sees that same hunger in these eighth seeded Grizzlies now. And it's concerning because the Grizzlies are up 1-0 going into tonight's game two uh, in Salt Lake City. They've already secured home court advantage. They're coming back here for games three and four uh, at FedEx Forum. And the Grizzlies can't act like this is already taken care of. They still got to go out there and perform and play well tonight. Uh, but when you look in his eyes and you see this hunger that this team has, it's one of those things that Mike Conley recognizes, and he really should, because these Grizzlies are indeed hungry to try to knock off this team and pull off another eighth over one uh, upset. And we'll see if, it, if they can hold true. Right now, they're off to a great start. We'll see what happens in game two. And that's your Mike Check Minute. Woo! A playoff Mike Check Minute. We got extended <laughs> yeah, Mike Check Minute. Yeah, playoff Mike season, Check Minute, yeah. Which yeah. we appreciate. And that's our first playoff Mike Check Minute because we didn't have you before that Sunday's is true. game. So that is true. we will ride with that. For okay. this Grizzlies team, though, obviously, I mean, you said it. One win does not win you a playoff series. Everything's great right now. Everything is feeling good here in Memphis, but you have to go back into that arena in Salt Lake City tonight, the hardest place to play in the NBA this season, and now the Jazz get Donovan Mitchell back on their side as mm -hmm. well. How does that change things for the Grizzlies outside the obvious tonight? You know, it's, it's still, right now, I think that the pressure now is, is completely on Utah. You know, and, and it's funny to say that because, again, we're not talking about, this isn't a Utah team that was in the NBA Finals last year or has experience of getting all the way. So it's not like they have this figured out and they can be like the Lakers and, you know, LeBron can say, all right, we're struggling early, but we'll get it back together. This is a Jazz team that's still figuring out a lot about itself, too. I mean, it was just this time a year ago where you talked about that team potentially falling apart and cracking at the seams with uh, Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell having their on-court and off-court issues. You know, guys are still trying to figure out their roles. Yes, they've had a remarkable season. Quinn Snyder's done a remarkable job, but if you're Utah and you're coming into game two tonight, you have to integrate Donovan Mitchell. You just had a controversial week in terms of how you handled his in ankle injury in return. And now everything has to be perfect for those guys to be comfortable. They're a little bit uncomfortable right now. And the Grizzlies have nothing. I don't want to say nothing to lose because it seems like it's dismissive. But they just have to go out there and play as close to themselves as possible and put all the pressure on Utah to close that game out because Utah needs this game coming back here to, uh, to Memphis for three and four. Uh, they definitely do. And the players all talked about the, you know, Donovan Mitchell coming back for game two. Grayson yeah. said they expect him to play. They expect that ankle to be just fine. Yeah. What do you expect from Donovan Mitchell, especially when you look back to those three games when we took them on earlier in the season and what he brings to this group? I mean, this is a guy that averaged, what, 36 against us in those two games. Yeah. He missed the third game or he missed one of the three games didn't play, but I mean, you're talking about a guy that put up 70 points in two games against the Grizzlies. Um, he had a six for six stretch, you know, in terms of when he, he just could not miss. Uh, he's basically the one guy that you look at and say, okay, Dylan disrupted a lot of great guys on the wing all season long. Donovan Mitchell wasn't one of those guys that he conquered yet. So <laughs> that's going to be an intriguing matchup to see how that goes. Donovan is such an explosive, cutting, slashy kind of player. You got to wonder if that ankle is not 100%. How is it going to impact his ability to move around? And is he going to try to force things? Is he going to try to figure out the way to be a setup guy? So there's a lot of questions that he has to answer just to reintegrate himself. Pretty much the same thing that um, you know, we had to figure out with Jaron Jackson Jr. Mm -hmm. It wasn't seamless by any stretch of the imagination. They're two different players. But at the end of the day, it's going to be an adjustment for, uh, for the Jazz. And the Grizzlies just have to be there to continue to put that pressure on them. Yeah, I think back to that bite we just heard from Xavier Tillman talking yeah. about, like, don't poke us, <laughs> don't come at us. <laughs> and then thinking back to D'Anthony Melton, who joined us earlier in the show, saying basically they're just a bunch of kids out there having fun, playing yeah. basketball. Like They're geeked out to be here. How do you think that that mentality is helping this team right now? Because maybe that pressure isn't there. Sure, there's pressure. It's the playoffs. It's yeah. different. They talk about the magnitude of the moment, but at the same time, like, they're just psyched to be still playing basketball at this point in the season. They, I, I think they are, but, but as you grow up, you grow up quickly. Yeah. Like this team had a season's worth of growth in the last week of the regular season. Like what they had to do with Sacramento to, to sweep that home, you know, that home, to finish up that home court uh, four game homestand, then to go into the play in and to uh, exact revenge against Golden State, a team that handled you, um, you know, just four days earlier. Like that stretch right there grew this team up by six, eight, 10 months possibly, right? So now you can't just say, hey, you know what, we're young, we're lucky because when you really, really think about it, I know, we, I know we've kind of used that 
a lot this season and, and because we're, th we're thinking about DeAnthony Melton and Jaron Jackson Jr. and John Morant, Grayson Allen, all these first, second, and third year players. But who's carrying the load right now? Jonas Valanciunas is in year seven, year eight. Kyle Anderson has been around for five years. Dylan Brooks has been around for four years. Um, so you have a lot of guys on this team that they're not young, like they're mid-career at this point. So if they don't take advantage of this opportunity now, you just never know what's going to happen with their contract situations and their injuries and all those kind of things. So you have that, that balance of desperation from these mid-career guys to sort of offset some of this youth and enthusiasm from the young guys. Mm, but these, this, this youth and this enthusiasm from the young guys, like really across the entire league, has been something yeah. very fun to watch. Everyone's talking about it because you're thinking about the future of the NBA and kind of what this could look like in you know five years when you have a John Morant, where you have yeah. a Dylan Brooks, a Trey Young, a Devin. And Booker being those guys where we're going to be able to say, you know, five time all star. And right. they're, they're silencing, as Trey Young will probably put it, they're silencing some of these, um, <laughs> these vet these bet leaderships that, that we've had in the league yeah. and our next gen Grizz, yeah. that is us. Like yeah. we are, yeah. that is us. And you look up and down our roster at the age level that we're at. And then you hear players talk like D'Anthony Melton and Xavier Tillman. Xavier Tillman has given us some amazing sound bites throughout the entire season. Jaron Jackson Jr. It makes you excited for this young, fresh group that we have for yeah. the future of the league. Yeah, I mean, that window is, is, is stretched all the way out. We can see four or five years down the line that these guys are still going to be in their mid-20s, not yeah. even, you know. And so there's a lot of, of growth there, um, but we're already seeing some of the progress that's being made. And I like the way, it, I, I don't know if the NBA intentionally had it play out like this, but sort of one night you get the, the, the veteran squads, right? Yeah. You get the late, like last night was about the veteran teams, you know, LeBron and the Lakers and, you know, Chris Paul and those guys. And then, you know, the earlier games, you know, you have Brooklyn and, 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 and Boston um, and then the Clippers, obviously. So and then on nights like tonight, you got the young and up and coming teams. You know, you got, you know, New York and Atlanta coming back for the first time and making the playoffs for the first time in a long time. And then this next gen Grizz uh, is playing tonight, too. So you, you kind of get a showcase of both where the league is right now, where it's been the last decade, but also on other nights where it's going. And when you have that kind of mix of, uh, of playoff talent and playoff teams, you have a sprinkling of, of, of the young and up-and-comers, and you have obviously a, a heaping of these veterans that, uh, that really want to be desperate and win now. Okay, fill in the blank for me. The yes. Grizzlies win tonight if? The Grizzlies win tonight if they continue to have deflections and forced turnovers. If they can get back up to that you know, uh, 20 forced turnovers area, uh, puts Utah into, into a lot of turnovers, make them force things uh, from that standpoint, the Grizzlies can win. If they can get, if they can get 15 plus turnovers, uh, force 15 plus turnovers, and if they can shoot, they make 15 threes. 15 turnovers, 15, 15 threes. That's, that's the formula that's right a, there. That's a high number right? there, Mike. I'm not 15, turn, like, I mean, they, 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 we've done it before. We've done it. We've done it. But the thing is, you have to offset Utah's. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not going to miss almost 30 threes right. again. That's not going to mm -hmm. happen, right? So, you know, when you look at what's going to change from Utah, you know, Clarkson isn't going to go over. You know, they're not going to have, what, what was it, 12 or 46 or 12 or 40 something from three point range. They're not going to do that. So, what do you have to do to make up for that? Because you really only won by three or four points. So what has to go right for you, and what do you expect them to make an adjustment for? So I think the Grizzlies still have to be disruptive defensively, and that's, that's the time. When you look up, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all got to answer that question too. The Grizzlies win tonight if the Grizzlies if, win tonight if the if, bench has forty points. Um, forty is too much. Forty points is too much. Sorry, yeah. sorry, that was ex that was aggressive. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking way back. Let's go with thirty points. Thirty points from the bench. Yes, okay. and half okay. of those. So if you're saying 15 threes, mm -hmm. I won't go half. I'll say six threes come from the bench. Okay. Between mm -hmm. DeAnthony Melton, Grayson Allen, Desmond Bain. Okay, okay. And then I'm gonna go, okay. I mean, then I'm gonna add, on top of all you guys, I think the Grizzlies win tonight if they can out-rebound this Utah Jazz uh, team. If Jonas Valanciunas can have another night on the offensive glass yeah, like he did, yeah. where the ball just comes to him and he just puts it right back up. And then defensively, not allowing Rudy Gobert to get yeah. hot down low inside the paint. Just, what we did once again, I think, on top of all three of ours, then that's a that's a win. I mean, obviously, we we, we lay out everything that, everything that we just said. That's a that's a victory for that's us. That's game point. So that's wow, we should be coaches. That's yes. a win. You out rebound <laughs> them, that. right? So you, you hit the out rebound them, right? Yeah. Put the pressure on them. You know, I talked about the 15 threes and you talked and, and uh, 15 turnovers and you talked about the uh, the bench scoring, mm -hmm. right? So and those are all things that is any of that would any of that surprise you, right? That's mm -hmm. basically the no. way the Grizzlies have played all season long, right? So. 
it's not like, you know, they have to do anything completely different. You know, just be yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say, though, is that I'm concerned about how many more free throws Utah made in that situation. Mm -hmm. They basically doubled you up, you know, 30, 29 to 15 makes from the free throw line. And then, obviously, they're going to make a few more of these threes that they took, too. They're yeah. not going to shoot 25% again. So. And then when you add on Donovan Mitchell to that, who can yeah. get to the free throw line, that yeah. could be a very scary thing, who also makes his free throws. Yes. Like, he's going to be yes. – if his ankle is fully healthy and he is able to attack and play the same amount of minutes that he's yeah. been playing, if he's in, in attack mode and he can get to that free throw line, we don't want what happened last night with Devin Booker did, 17 of 17 from free throw. They still lost, though. Right. But we don't right. want that to happen. Right. So you're adding right. another player who can get to the free throw line as well as, as – with Mike Conley. Yeah, you you are. You are. I just some I'm, I'm a little bit cautious because I think what is Donovan Mitchell going to take away from other guys that have been right. doing well too, right? So like Jordan Clarkson has been activated. You know, I mean, he's a, Joe Ingles has been a guy that's been productive. They fought over the six man in terms of who could win that. Bogdanovich, like I said last time I was here, I mean, he channeled his inner Larry Bird in that second half, right? So, you know, which one of those like if Donovan Mitchell is coming in, some of those guys aren't going to be able to get fed mm -hmm. the way that they normally have. And, um, and you got to wonder. Another low-key guy that's been impactful, Derek Favors' physicality is a problem coming off that bench. And when Jonas is out of the game, we don't have another guy down low who could be as physical. And I love, you know, what Xavier Tillman said, but he's got to be able to offset Derek Favors mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Uh-oh. Derek Favors, I did not realize this, stand in reach of 9-2. The goal is only 10 feet high. Yeah. So <laughs> – uh, Gobert is 9-7. He leaves the game, in comes Favors, and you still got that wall right there. You're right, Mike. If, if they're going to win, one of the things that needs to happen is somebody's got to get in there and neutralize his effect, especially on the defensive end, so that they can get easy looks at the rim. They're driving, and they can't see the rim because all they see is this dude's hands. Yeah. He stands on his tippy toes, and he's at the rim. It's yeah. crazy how long they are. Yeah. 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 And yeah. when you think about that bench, because I think Joe Ingles plays better coming off the bench. We've mm -hmm. seen it. So uh, as you mentioned about, you know, someone is going to have to give. But I'm like, I think Joe Ingles going, moving back to that bench with Donovan Mitchell, mm -hmm. then it, I think it could work a little bit better because they're used to playing in that in that unit. And Jordan right. Clarkson, he didn't play particularly well, you know, from behind the arc. He was 0 of, 0 of 8 from that right. game one. As you mentioned, I don't think that's going to happen again. You can't <laughs> rely on that happening with this Utah Jazz team because right. we saw yesterday with the Lakers, they played 11 guys in the first half. Like, if, if they figure out their rotations in minutes, I think, you know, certain teams are – playing different, differently where they play a 10-man group, eight guys are playing, especially when it comes to the playoffs. But that could be very scary if Utah has kind of that figured out. And, they, and they, they, what you're saying is that if they get to their full complement of guys and get mm -hmm. back to staggering how, how effectively they use their players, right? I mean, that's, one of, that's why that team has, what, seven guys that average double figures? Yeah. I mean, that's insane in terms of the depth uh, that they have. And, and again, they're the better team. They're the number one seed for a reason. Like, they're they, the number one seed overall in the league for a reason. So it's not like, you know, the Grizzlies has, have this figured out. You're going to get Utah's best punch. But what I think was key for the Grizzlies is that they found out early in this series that guess what? As they said, look, we put our pants on the same way. We bleed just like you bleed. We know that we can beat you. So it's just a matter of can we continue to do the things consistently that it takes to knock you off. And uh, that's going to be – that's what makes this series intriguing. All of these series, for real. Like, I know a couple of them might be over with already. Like, I don't think Boston's going to come back and do anything with Brooklyn at this point. Um, but every other series you look at, is anything settled? Like, I, I don't Bucks, know. Do you think he can come back? I think, that he, well, because I think when you get back to Miami, mm -hmm. and, and that's a different uh, level right there. I think you, you, you poke the bear in Jimmy Butler. Now you're mm -hmm. going to wake Jimmy Butler up, and I think Bam Adebayo and those guys are going to get back in it. But that could just be me talking from Miami I was going to say, sounds a little, a little biased for no, Mr. Like Miami it. himself. Matt Clifford. <laughs> Matt Clifford. Oh, I thought you were with me. I thought, I, thought, I thought you adopted Miami from the... I have, and I don't think that they're coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> what about, okay, what about Matt Clippers then? A lot of people... What's like, your thought on... The Clippers can't... Like, they will be, like if this will be a, a, a disaster mm -hmm. if they fall in the first round to the Mavs. And that's not no disrespect to the Mavs, but... You got rid of Doc Rivers and you said all of these things, you, you, you side with Paul, you know, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, everybody defended those guys. It wasn't their fault for the most part. And now you roll this out. Now you come back to this. Like, please, man. Like, if, if the Clippers can't get past the first round, I'm basically done respecting those so he guys. He just got his hand on his hip. He got something got, to say. This is another one of those dumb situations that front offices make. Got rid of Doc Rivers because that, that was supposed to be your issue. And now you're about to get bounced in the first round. Meanwhile, Doc is in 
Philadelphia. Philly. Yeah. And they got the one seed in the East and look like a legit title contender. That's yeah. My like, yeah. like, come on, man. Make yeah. better decisions, people. Now, now, I will say, I will say, and you're absolutely right, too. Doc is looking good right now, right, <laughs> uh, from that situation. Um, but at some point, you know, the, the, the voice wears out on guys. Like, you got to move on at, at a certain point, right? Doc was with the Clippers for a minute. And it just, even though Kawhi just got there and Paul George just got there, those guys aren't guys that you just basically ride into the ground and you try, like, for whatever reason, they think they've already arrived. And Paul George hasn't, Kawhi Leonard has, but they still want to be respected in a certain way and dealt with in a certain way. And Doc is like, look, man, like, if, if I got through Boston with KG and Pierce and these surefire champion Hall of Famers, I'm not going to bite my tongue for y'all. Like, come on, that's different. But I mean, that's why, you know, at this point, Kawhi got his. Paul George might not, you know, he might not get his. He might not ever get his. Kawhi got wow. his for a new path to whatever team he'll go take. A, I, and, I and laid in bed point, last night and Chris yeah. Luther goes, I can't wait for Kawhi to play for the Warriors. I was oh, like, man, slow your oh, roll. Whoa, slow whoa. Your that's some wishful. Hey, but you roll. know what? That's, that's wishful. Kevin, Kevin Durant that, did it, right? <laughs> so. And they figured out a way to make it work financially. So, you know. Roser, but. Roser really thinks Kawhi is going to go to Miami Heat. I know. He's, he's all really on thinks that. On, he's really on Miami Heat. Miami Heat. I wouldn't put it past Pat Riley to put something together. But if you're Kawhi, you went back to L.A. because that was home. Like, you wanted to, you know, wrap it all up. So just move at home, right? Over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and but it, at, at this point, I mean, are you, is he going to really put you over? If you, if you can't win with that team. When yeah. LeBron basically and AD sat out half the season because of injuries and the West was wide open, if you can't win now, like, I don't know. I don't. He, I don't, he doesn't look like the same dominant, single-minded player that he was when he was in Toronto and in, in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Still top. I mean, he's still an elite top ten player in the league, but nah, Kawhi Leonard doesn't scare me anymore. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. He doesn't. Well, what does make us excited? is the Grizzlies, and so they take on the Utah Jazz yes. tonight. It's a late night one, but we're all we're okay. You're not on the call, right? Because I know you told me you have the weekend. So you're not yes. on the call, so Elliot Perry will be on the call on 92.9. Um, but Grizzlies, Utah Jazz, 9 p.m. Central time here. It's okay. We're going to get through it. We're going to get through it, but it's going to be a late night one, and we are going to be cheering on our Grizz, so hopefully they – listen to our game plan. I'm sure Coach Jenkins has an amazing game plan. A lot of the players talked about what it's like to play under Coach Jenkins, yeah. who also worked under Quinn Snyder, and yep. he called that his graduate degree that made him kind of like come up in the ranks of, of coaching. So yep. you got yep. two guys who know, who know each other very well, so can't wait for tonight's matchup. Who's one, who's one guy? Who's one guy are we looking at? One guy, each one of us. One guy, one Grizzly guy. One Grizzly sleeper. Sleeper, Jaron. Oh, yeah, he's not a sleeper. A I need him to be awake. But but yeah, no, no, but right yeah. now he's, yeah. just, he's yeah. gotten into that territory, and that's yes. the problem. I would he say be such he a just. Maker. I want to see him do more. I just want. I want to see him do more. I think that's the. We we can we can say Dylan. We can say Job. We can say right. JV. We've seen those three guys. Right. And when you want to add someone to yes. that group, I would love yeah. to see a Jam. We've seen Kyle. Kyle might not have the like offense, Kyle, but he right? Plays but that defensively, yeah. this man's great. If Jaren has that, you said Anthony. I said DeAnthony just yeah. because it's been a tough month for DeAnthony Melton, and we it just is. had him on the show, so got to give you him got, a little that, boost that might be a good vibe. into it. But that might be a good Drew, vibe. And if you want that bench weekend, to produce, yeah. he could be a good start if he could get back to that boost yes. mentality. I, that I hadn't said Boost him. Brothers in well, a long they, time. They've been mm -hmm. separated, okay, Ooh. because – I mean, Clark, yeah, we one of them is like, you. like just kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's charging. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> charging yeah. back up. I'm gonna go Desmond Bain. Yeah. And it's because, like, I was gonna say Grayson Allen, but Grayson mm -hmm. showed me something, right? But I'm gonna go Desmond Bain because when he hit that three at the end of the quarter and stared down, you know, <laughs> that that Jazz player, I'm like, okay, this dude is ready. Like, he's ready for the moment. So you're gonna need him out there to knock down threes and also to defend in that in that situation with Donovan Mitchell. So I'm going to go Desmond Bain as, as, as my X factor. Mm -hmm. CJ, what you got, man? Who you got? Oh, that's tough. I, We're running out of guys because he's yeah, on people. <laughs> Y'all are left me with like John Conchar. <laughs> wow. Tilly and Tilly. No, Tilly, <laughs> Tilly, Tilly. Um, no, I think Grayson. Grayson. Like Grayson Allen okay. come, coming off the bench because like Jessica brought up, you're going to need bench production yeah. from somebody. And I think Grayson is one of those guys who can give you quality bench minutes and put up a couple of clutch threes, right, yeah. to momentum-changing plays. So I think Grayson Allen coming into the game, changing momentum, is, is a sleeper Grizzlies player to watch in this game. Mm -hmm. All right.
Cool. We're watching, we're watching everybody. So now we're watching the whole team. We're watching and literally we're the, whole, the, <laughs> the whole entire team. And that's what we need. As Coach Jiggins said, everyone. They When you come to the playoffs, as JV just said, everything counts. Every step counts. Every pass counts. Every possession counts. Every player matters. And so at the end of the day, we're just watching the Grizzlies. So hopefully you're watching tonight on Valley Sports Southeast at 9 p.m. Central Time. Grizzlies taking on the Utah Jazz. It's time to get into some double tap or not before we get out of here. Uh, we're let's, roping you in. Yes, we're going to. You're going to stick around and just stay. What'd you say? We're roping you in. Oh, uh, okay. I'm you're going to stick around right. and stay. All right. Uh, so for the Brooklyn Nets and Boston Celtics, I know, Mike, you said that you think this one might be over. Mm-hmm. Where, well, the Nets will have to now travel to TD Garden, Boston, to take on uh, the Nets. And Kyrie was asked about going back. Take a listen to the question and his answer. Okay. I'm not sure if we're going to talk to you before game three. I know when you were in Boston, you always had such good things to say about the crowds there and the feeling of playing at the garden. What do you expect now that there's going to actually be people there in the building as opposed to last time? Uh, I mean, it's not my first time being an opponent in in Boston. Uh, So, you know, I'm just looking forward to competing with my teammates and, um, you know, hopefully we can just keep it strictly basketball. You know, there's no belligerence or any racism going on, subtle racism and people yelling from the crowd. Um, but even if it is, it's, it's part of the nature of the game and we're just going to focus on what we can control. Is it something you've experienced in Boston before? I'm not the only one that could attest to this, but it's just, you know, it, it won't. It, <laughs> it is what it is. He didn't have to say much there, but he said enough. He said enough. Um, I double tap this. I love any player that can be open and honest and go there when he's asked a simple question of like, what do you expect? And like, hopefully the racism will stop. I think hopefully Boston fans and like TD Garden and the players organization can take a deep look because this has been a conversation that we've had, you know, for a couple of seasons now about Boston. I've lived there. So. I was going to say, you double tapped for multiple reasons. <laughs> <laughs> you triple tapped. I mean, yeah, you triple sure did. On that. You yeah, sure did. Yeah. Uh, loved it. That's why I sent it. I was like, oh, we got to put this in the show somewhere we're going to find a home for. We're not running out of time for this one. But <laughs> what's your reaction on hearing this? But not to the statement. Not like, not that this is still happening. Not this is still going on. But double mm-hmm. tap that he spoke out for it. Well, my first reaction was, man, when was the last time we saw a pick at the podium, <laughs> right? Like the pick game was strong, man, at the end, right? Uh, so that's, that's the first true. thing uh, in, in terms of surprising. I, I am surprised. It shouldn't have been surprising that Kyrie would be the guy that would kind of subtly, you know, toss this out there as a little bit of a grenade that he kind of, he could have answered it in a million different ways. He chose to answer it the way he did. Um, you know, we've heard that about Boston, you know, players. I mean, Bill Russell, who's done more for Boston and that franchise than anybody ever has talked about, he wrote a book about, you know, how that city never embraced, embraced them really until, you know, way down the line. So that's, that's a raucous fan base. They do push the edge. There's a lot of different, and you know this, Megan, from being in there and working there. Boston is such a unique city because they have so many different cultural pockets. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's, there's bigotry and racism within segments of that community, right? So it's the Irish and Italians and all of those kind of things. It's not just black or white. So you do hear a lot of things in that, in that TD Garden. I've been a part of it. I've heard it in the media from where we sit. Uh, it's unfortunate, but Kyrie, you know, again, Kyrie's being Kyrie. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And you respect him, and he's going to go out there and perform anyway. Hey, you mentioned Bill Russell. Yeah. It's a good transition into one of our other double taps. Bill Russell was here in Memphis ah, yesterday. He stopped right. by the National Civil Rights Museum on his drive back from the Hall of Fame ceremony. There you go. See, I was wondering, like, hold up. I, I, I did see that, right? Mm-hmm. And first of all, shout out to Bill Russell. So now we've had Rihanna mm-hmm. and Bill Russell just pass through. You know, like, like no fanfare. They didn't, they didn't want anything like that. They just wanted to show their respects to Memphis. Shout out to both of them because I love them for doing that, right? Um, but I thought the Hall of Fame, where was the Hall of Fame? Last week in like, uh, was Connecticut. It? Where right? was it? I so was, I yeah, was you don't pass through Memphis well. to get yeah. back to Boston from <laughs> Connecticut, right? That's kind Unless of a, he's. That's kind of a weird yeah, transition. It's just a road trip. <laughs> and where is he going? Because he could be going, you know. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's going. He might not feel comfortable now, flying. Now, Bill Russell would. Uh, where does he live? He would deliver the MVP trophy. So wherever they're going to announce MVP, he might yeah. be on his way there. But. Regardless, man, it was cool to see him out there, right? Yeah, like, he like, lives in Mercer Island, Washington. So he's 
That's a little. Yeah, yeah. he's not yeah. driving that way. Trust huh? me, if you're the, driving the Hall of Fame is in Connecticut, Massachusetts, in Connecticut. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Those I've been states, there. I don't know. I've been like, there. Yeah. I was in Bristol. Yeah. I've been in, so was in right. Boston. Yeah. So I can't remember which state it's in, but it's somewhere in, uh, up there, Connecticut, in, Massachusetts. It's in Massachusetts. It's in Springfield, Springfield, Massachusetts. Right on the line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you go yeah. from yeah. Bristol to get to right Boston. Oh goodness, that drive. So he was just passing through. Right. He just had to come down and get some Central Barbecue and hit up the civil rights. Man, good to see Bill Russell doing that. But yeah, so that that I guess it does. It, a, it, it syncs up, right? The double taps. Yeah, and then we'll sync up one more one more round oh. for double tap because you mentioned the Knicks Hawks game. Yes. One of the other games tonight. Um, I know that everyone was really eager to hear New York City Mayor Bill De Blasio's opinion on the Knicks Hawks matchup. Uh, take a listen to what he had to say about Trey Young. This is about basketball. I have an important official announcement. Uh, this is very serious. Want to get this out? Uh, message to Trey Young uh, on behalf of the people of New York City and, and anyone who cares about actually playing basketball the right way. Stop hunting for fouls, Trey. Uh, I want to quote Steve Nash, one of the great player, great coach. He says, quote unquote, that's not basketball. Trey, Trey, that hawk's not going to fly in New York City. Come on. Play the game the right way. See if you can win. I think the Knicks are going to teach you a lesson. Trey Young for fifty tonight. You. <laughs> Knicks are going to teach you a lesson. I love when ah. I love when city. I like I love when city and like the whole city comes together. We've seen it here for the Grizzlies. It's yeah. it's it is the yeah. conversation. No matter where you go, we've seen it from from a lot a lot of our city leaders. I like that he took the time. You know, I'm not a Knicks or or a Hawks fan like that, but if you are a Knicks fan, that probably gave you some type, type of motivation. But if you're also Trey Young and Elaine Hawks, that gave you some equal as more, and that adds so much more onto this series that makes it so entertaining. <laughs> Like you don't so like many, it? Oh, I so get the single shot on this one. Oh, yeah, okay, I guess I was just, I was about to pass it on nope. to Jessica over Back here. Back to you, <laughs> man. These, these like. These politicians, man, we got so many other things. Stay in your lane, bro. Like, you don't have, like, come on. Like, For him? Okay. Like, no, no, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I get it. They're fans, too. I get it. They're fans, too, but it just looks corny. You're in a, a in a business suit. Uh, your time is limited up there, and you throw on a, a raggedy Knicks cap. And, you're, like, come on. Like, at what point? You could have talked about the Knicks all of this time, and now you want to talk about it? Come on. And they got issues up in New York also. That's what I'm saying, Everybody's yo. Everybody's like, issues, like, right? Now is not the time, because I'm with you, Megan. I yeah. like seeing people, politicians, cross over and in sports. Epic, something we from asked, we do now, now is not the time, though, especially not in anywhere over here, because we are still trying to figure out this COVID vaccine thing. We're still trying to figure out. You guys. No, nah, that's fine. That part, no, that, part, that part is cool. Like, I get it. You know, it's light, 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 it's like New Yorkers don't want to hear this from. That's what I'm saying. Like, right he, I'm not this saying is a man like he can't. Just ate a French fry in a press conference, took a bite of the French fry, and then put the rest of the French fry back in the container with the rest of the French fries. Like, no, just sit this now, one out. Did you know about the French fry violation? I know the French fry violation. I, I know that his deep. 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 But I will say this: when we take something a minute. I haven't listened to the whole entire, yeah, whole entire yeah. press conference, so I have no idea. Yes, there's some serious <laughs> stuff going on, but we do take some time to like have a little loosen fun up. to loosen up. We yeah. always we do want to because we, we live in a world where we nitpick politicians too, and we can't say we because like we now know it's all together. We're it living in a world where we're now we're all we're all Megan, encompassing Megan, nobody, it all together. Nobody wants to have fun with Bill De Blasio. Well, I'm, looks, not that, looks, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm not saying that part of it, yeah. but I do say I like when cities. And you have and leaders, leaders line up with officials, their teams. you line up I with your too. teams and you, sure. you show <laughs> sure. you show like you, that you are united and it's fun. We do it here for our for our Grizzlies. Now we don't have a mayor like that, but we still <laughs> love the excitement. When's the last part time a Tennessee it? mayor has said anything or governor has said anything? Is that mayor or governor de Blasio? Mayor. That's mayor. That's mayor. Okay. So governor <laughs> is the other guy then, right? <laughs> the guy who can't keep his hands to himself? Cuomo, yes. Okay, cool. Um, oh, the, the interpreter in that is great. If you go back and watch that clip, watch just the top right corner because she is signing with an attitude of disdain I know, for Trey I Young. Know. It is great. I'm like, I, I, it's not like we can all have fun, right? And, and to Megan's point, this is about just taking a moment and having fun and getting into the to the uh, to the series a little bit. I don't have a problem with him doing that. My only problem is that, yo, you're doing it at a press conference with a corny hat on. Go to Madison Square Garden, and you know the reporters mm -hmm. are going to be there for you there. Mm -hmm. Like, do it in the environment. Where where it's like you know where you can be in that in that moment in that in that environment, but 
Come on, dude. Like, he's not – he doesn't – I wonder how much he really knows about the series, right, and about Trey Young and all of the things. You know, that he's he, was he, up was, there. He, he was wearing a Nets jersey He was in a Nets jersey week. last week. <laughs> Pick a team, you coward. He's amazing. He's, nah, he's, he's trying to find, he's he's trying to find any support we're having. That's what I'm saying. saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You've got to represent all your people. That's what we, all, that's what we do know. That's what we do know. I'm, you know, I'm really saying this. I'm happy that I don't live because I, I get that a lot from New Yorkers. And you got you you do have to pick a team, not yeah. when you are yeah. not mm-hmm. when you're a mayor of both, but like you really do. And I'm just like, I'm so happy that I live in a city where we just got one. Ah, we just yeah, have yeah. one because my sister goes to that all the time. She'll go to a Knicks game. She'll go to a Nets game. She's just like, I'm just trying to go. I'm trying to have some fun. Like, <laughs> I don't care what y'all trying to do. I'm just trying to have some fun and go and have and have a good time. That's and it. they have that across the board too, because it's, it's Giants, Jets, it's Yankees, Mets, it's Knicks, Nets. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah, you got to at some point. Yeah, it's it's allegiance is there. Run deep. It does. It does. All right. Well, we gotta hustle up and get out of here. But before we tell you what we are watching. Check this out first. Go Warriors! Let's go get one! Yeah. We got earned my spot in this playoffs, so I didn't continue to play with the confidence we have. Yes, that's a foul! Talk to him! Dylan Bain! Three for Desmond Bain! I like that. Hold it there. Let him see the goose snap. Now for three, it's through! Morant drives a look away. Zero's on the clock. Memphis has pulled the upset. The Grizzlies have beaten Utah in game one. All righty, next up, Memphis. We will be watching Grizzlies at Jazz 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, if you want to watch it with some other Grizz fans, we have our official watch party at the Malco Summer Drive-In. So make sure you go to Grizz.com for details. I believe you have to register. So make sure you go there early and try to reserve your reservation for you and your car. It is round one and game two. It's all going down tonight on Valley Sports Southeast. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Game two. <laughs> Where are you I watching? I can't wait. Uh, I might go by the drive-in. I might go by there. I might pull up to the Collierville watch party at um. <laughs> coming over? You coming over to the triplets? Yeah, at the game room. I might yeah. go to the game room and check it out there. Or I might just come down and come down Sweet and. Two sixteen. You got options. Yeah, I got options. That's good. That's cool. I might. I gotta figure it out. You just want one of those ham sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Their time is limited. Just got to get one more, one more back. Oh, All right, goodness. what are we watching tonight other than Grizzlies Jazz? Well, before Grizzlies Jazz, you've got the GCM Prewind starting at 8 o'clock on Instagram Live. Megan Triplett will have that for you. Yeah, Lane Whitaker is back. Oh, he's he back. is back because there's no Grizz gaming game. That's why he wasn't there the last time. So uh, Lane Whitaker, Chris Vernon will pop in. Mike Wallace is going to pop in. Kelsey Wright Johnson is going to pop in. We're gonna have all of our GCM Grizz Dang, people so pop hurt. in. I'm so hurt. I wasn't Fisher. invited. This we, is, well, this so is na- awkward. So now that it has become shoot, like, <laughs> 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 was is, not aware. Wow. <laughs> she just said that her and Chris, her and Chris can talk about other people looking good and not get their feelings hurt, but I can't do it IG live. <laughs> <laughs> I feel what you. What he just man. named everybody's life. She just named every Jessica. person at GCM other than no, the I two of us. CJ. Wait, she didn't name me? I didn't name I, I didn't name I didn't CJ. Name you. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Megan. I didn't name Kevin Knight. I didn't name Pete Pranica. <laughs> Those aren't GCM. Uh, they Woo. are. We have Rob Fisher too, which he I know is GCM. Now. We cross over. We cross over. It's okay. No Devin Walker this Sorry. time. Sorry. Now our now our IG pre one. We went from no one wanting to be on it. <laughs> to literally you everyone made it so much wanting fun. to be on it. That's so on literally, you. we only have no more than four people at a time, and so we're spacing it all out. <laughs> we will continue it as the Grizzlies come on. <laughs> yeah, you where's Robbie? From the truck. Man. But join in. Bad. Join in. People's feelings are getting hurt. So Ooh. join in on the pre wines. Yikes. <laughs> what else yikes, are you watching? Yikes. All the other all the games. games. All the games. That's yeah. all we got today. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. I, 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 I'm not picking sides. I'm, I'm literally boxed in the middle right here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and zoop. I'm going to zip it up and go Grizz. Yes. Well, all right. We'll be back tomorrow morning for more Grizz's action. We'll, we will recap game number two. What do we, who do we have on? I don't know. Tomorrow's Thursday. We'll figure it Devin, out. We'll tell you. We have, we have, we'll have guests on. That's all you need to know. Eh, people. Somebody people here. People will be here. Yes. We'll be up. Bye. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or Grind City Media on YouTube.